All right, I'm going to explain how to use the new fetch method for doing AJAX calls in less than five minutes. So let's get underway. I have a sample web page here. I have a div that I've given the ID output to, and inside of it I've got some pre-tags for pre-formatted text. The reason I've got that is I'm going to fetch some JSON and I want to display it in a formatted way. All right, this is the sample data that I'm going to get. So how do I use fetch, the fetch method, the new promise-based way to do AJAX calls? Well, at its most simple, that's it. We're done. We have now, if I save that, I come over here and I run my page, I've done it. I've actually made a request, sent it off to a server, and I've got back the data. And if I bring up the console here, but if we go into the network tab right here, if I refresh this page, you can see Here's the page that I requested, and right there, this is the data. It's back from the server. Now, I'm not doing anything with the data that came back. I'm not doing anything with the file that came back, but I have made the request. So how do I work with the stuff that comes back? Come inside here, and I can make a whole series of these then method calls. And at the very end, I add a catch. Then is the method that handles the response that comes back. And then if this has a function inside of here and it has a return statement, it will pass it on to here. If this has a return statement, it passes on to the next then and so on and so on. We can make a chain of as many then methods as we want. And all we have to do is have a return at the end of each one. That will continue to travel down this chain until it gets to the very end. The catch listens for an error. If there is an error, anywhere along the chain, it automatically jumps over to the catch. So what do we put inside each of these? We put a function. And because ES6 is easier to write and faster to write, we're going to use ES6 functions. So I've got a response object. That's what's going to be passed into my function. This request will give me back the file. This response holds that file. I want to take the file and say, hey, give me the JSON data that's inside of it. So the response object actually has a method called JSON. Now my ES6 function is going to return the value of this. So I'm getting the JSON data being passed on to my next function. And then inside here, I can do whatever I like. Now, just to keep this simple, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it out inside these pre-tags. And I'm going to use the JSON stringify method. Inside the stringify method, I'm going to pass in my JSON object. There's no function I'm going to call, and I want to add tabs at the start of each one of these lines. That's what this function is going to allow me to do. There we go, just like that. Inside the catch, I will be passed an error object. Inside the error object, there's a name property so let nm equal that. This is the type of error, so like a type error. And let message equals error dot message. This is the error message. And then we can alert that out. So this is coming from the catch. And we're going to write out those two variables, nm and msg. There we go. So if there is an error, that will pop up. All right, document dot query selector target the put div with the pre-tag inside of it, and we set its text content equal to our variable str. There we go. There's the data back from the server. And if instead you wanted to use some of the data, we could, instead of doing that line, we could do something like document query selector output dot text content. Run that again. There we go. 42. That was the first post ID that we got. So we can extract the data or we can look at the text either way you want to do it. And if we made a mistake in here, let's say we had the wrong URL, run that. Here's the catch running. Type error was the type of error. Failed to fetch. That was the message. We failed to get it. And that's it. That is how fetch works. So good luck with that. Have lots of fun with your Ajax.